So once the surgery is done, they go through a checklist because we need to wean the patient off the cardiopulmonary bypass. The patient's heart should not feel that he's coming off bypass. It should be as smooth as that. So we make sure that the ventilation is on, the lungs are inflating, and we keep the table, table neutral, the operating table neutral, because head low means more return, head up means left return. And then we go through all the blood gases, make sure that the heart and the rest of the body is ready to come off. We see that the temperature is optimal now. If it was cold earlier, which definitely should have been, we want to rewarm the patient to the adequate temperature. We check the monitors, we check the urine bag, empty it, because now that the patient is off the cardiopulmonary bypass, we need to see how much urine the child is making. So, which is again a sensitive indicator that the repair has gone well and the heart function is good. We add inotropes in the form of adrenaline, mildrenone, dobutamine, maybe even calcium as an inotrope to help that heart, which is just now operated, to recover its pumping action. We keep the pacing box available because at times it's possible for us to damage the atrioventricular node of the child, which means we may have to pace the child. Or sometimes even though in sinus, the rate might be low, so we need to pace it to the adequate rate. And we keep the blood available in the theater and uh, we check all the major bleeding points to be sure that we don't have to go back on cardiopulmonary bypass to fix any bleeding point deep in the chest. Once all this is ready, the anesthetist has given a thumbs up, the perfusionist is ready, the surgeon starts uh, coming off bypass. So the venous cannulae are first removed uh, and once there is stable hemodynamics, uh, we then remove the arterial cannulae as well. In between, sometimes we use what is called as uh, cuff and muff, that is conventional and modified ultrafiltration. This removes all the excess fluid the child could have accumulated on the cardiopulmonary bypass, while on the cardiopulmonary bypass. Then maybe excess potassium, if there is any, it helps to increase the hematocrit of the child, so helps in uh, controlling the bleeding. And all the interleukins and any complement activated factors which are there are also removed which helps the child's recovery in the post-operative period. So uh, once the venous lines are removed, we filter, and then we check with protamine test dose. If there is no reaction, we start giving protamine, and we remove the arterial cannula as well. And then we achieve thorough hemostasis. As you know, the chest cavity is quite a rigid or a limited space cavity, unlike the abdomen. It can hold fluid, fetus, and all the five Fs that you all know. Unlike that, the heart, uh, I mean, the mediastinal cavity is quite a rigid uh, cavity. It cannot hold volume like that. Any excess uh, bleeding or fluid in and around the heart causes tamponade of the heart. So we have to be very sure that we have achieved optimal hemostasis before we close the chest. So that's about it. So before I uh, stop this talk, I would like to quote Sir Walton Lilhay, who said that what mankind can dream, research and technology can achieve. So in the field of cardiopulmonary bypass, the research and the technological development in cardiopulmonary bypass has made most of the complex cardio, cardiac surgeries, even on one, two day old babies, safe and doable today as compared to what we were about 50, 60 years ago. So it's a great technological advancement and a great tool which has uh, undoubtedly, it can be called as one of the most uh, prominent uh, developments or inventions of modern medicine, uh, which has changed the face of cardiac surgery, right? Thanks everybody.